As soon as she turns 18, this girl starts getting marriage proposals, but none of them is suitable for her. Before making a choice, the girl turns into a tiny doll and meets a prince who immediately falls in love with her. However, if the girl wants to marry the prince, she must save his castle from the deadly mice kingdom. Marie always dreamed of becoming a ballet dancer and loved performing for the guests. She lives with her mother, and they have been suffering financially since the death of Marie's father. After a dance performance on the Christmas Eve, one of the guests named Mr. Ratter spares a moment to admire Marie's talent. She feels uneasy because of the creepy stares and avoid talking to Mr. Ratter. He is not just here to watch the performance but to remind Marie's mother about the huge loan her husband took before his death. If she doesn't pay back in a day, Mr. Ratter will send her to jail. The poor woman gets frightened and begs Mr. Ratter for mercy. Taking the advantage of this situation, Mr. Ratter asks Marie to be his wife if she doesn't want to see her mother in jail. Mr. Ratter is not a suitable match in any aspect, so the woman prefers going to jail instead of agreeing to this deal. Mr. Ratter leaves for now after giving his nutcracker to Marie, so it keeps reminding her of reconsidering the decision. Marie locks herself in the room and throws away the nutcracker in anger. She can't believe that all of this is happening on Christmas Eve. It feels like just yesterday when Marie was a carefree child playing with toys. She wishes to be small again and play endlessly with her favorite toys. As she says that, a star falls from the sky to grant her wish. Something magical happens and Marie turns into the size of a doll. Her mother is passing through the corridor so Marie rushes to call for help. But the mother can't hear her voice clearly and assumes that it's just a rat. Marie gets really worried, but at least she doesn't have to marry someone now. She starts exploring the giant room but keeps facing trouble. Marie is not used to her new size and almost gets killed by sewing pins. Suddenly she hears some creepy noises and a rat attacks her out of nowhere. While being tiny, Marie can't defend herself from the rat, but luckily someone is there to save her. It's the Nutcracker that is alive and fighting bravely with the rat. Unfortunately, his sword slips out of his hand and the rat takes over him. The Nutcracker almost gets killed, but suddenly a sheep saves his life. Marie realizes that all of her toys have become alive, including her childhood favorites, the sheep and the ostrich. Marie can't understand what is happening, but the wizard toy explains that it is all a part of Christmas Eve. It is a special night full of magic, but luckily, as soon as the morning will arrive, all the magical spells will be lifted and everything will turn back to normal. Hearing this, Marie gets relieved and starts talking with the toys. However, the Nutcracker is still confused because he can't remember where he came from. He only remembers that he hates rats and must kill them at any cost. The Nutcracker proceeds towards the rat hole, but hits his head on the wall. This partially recovers his memory, and he remembers that his name is George. After a few moments, the wizard suddenly tells Marie that she has to stop George. If any of them is not present in the room during the sunrise, the magic spell will not be lifted. Marie rushes to stop George, but he has already gone far away in the hole. Seeing this, the ostrich and the sheep also join Marie in finding George. The hole takes them to a mysterious land where everything is according to their size. Marie asks George to return with her, but he clearly refuses to follow anyone's orders. Suddenly a carriage stops by and a scary woman with a tail steps out of it. She smells something weird and asks her son and the guards to investigate the surroundings. To save Marie and others, the ostrich distracts the guards in the opposite direction. After realizing that it is just a bird, the guards return back to the carriage. The ostrich unites with Marie and the sheep and explains how scared he was. Meanwhile, George slides down on a cliff and finds the waterfall. On the other side, there's a beautiful castle that makes George remember everything that happened in his past. He is actually a prince who lived happily in this castle along with his parents. Unfortunately, the queen died when George was just a child. The king remarried a mysterious woman named Charlotte that was hiding a tail under her dress. She also brought her cunning son Philip to the castle and forced George to obey them. Just in a year, George realized that the new queen and all of her relatives are actually rats that have power to appear as humans. He wanted to tell everything to his dad, but before he could do it, Charlotte turned him into a nutcracker. While sharing his story through a song, George starts crying which makes Marie really sad. She feels really sorry for him, but they have to return home before sunrise so the spell can be lifted. However, George doesn't care about the spell. He wants to save the king and defeat the evil rats. Marie explains that it's not possible for a prince to defeat all the rats by himself. George should give up and return home so the spell can be lifted and everything can become normal again. 
Marie doesn't realize that becoming normal means George will be a nutcracker again and will never be able to defeat the evil rats. George gets angry at her selfish behavior and steps back but his foot slips and he falls in the river. Marie starts to panic and jumps in the river to save the prince. She brings him to the shore and tries to wake him up but George is completely lifeless. The ostrich believes that George has died so the best option right now is to carry him back so Marie can at least live a normal life. Marie immediately refuses to drag George like a toy. He is a human being with emotions and a worthy life goal. George wakes up and hears everything Marie said. He asks for Marie's help in defeating the rats, and in exchange, George will return to her room before the sunrise. Marie agrees to the deal, and they start planning how to sneak inside the castle. Meanwhile in the castle, the king is kept asleep with the help of a magic potion. As soon as he gets back in senses, the king starts asking about his son. He also mentions the rat people, but Charlotte says that it is all because of his illness. In the name of medicine, she gives him another dose of magic potion and put him to sleep. Charlotte wants to take over the whole kingdom and she's keeping the king alive only to find the location of a magic flute. Though she has turned the prince into a nutcracker, Charlotte is still afraid of his return and keeps a strong guard on the palace. There's no way George can enter through the main gate. He suddenly remembers about a secret tunnel that goes underneath the castle. No one besides the royal family knows about this tunnel so there will be no guards there. The sheep breaks the hidden door and everyone gets inside the tunnel. They use a wooden plank to cross the river and reach the other side. It seems like a museum that has been abandoned for centuries. George calls it the Royal Crypt, that is used to bury the dead members of the royal family. Hearing about graves, the ostrich gets scared, and wonders if there are any ghosts. As soon as he says that, a bunch of scary ghosts attack them out of nowhere. Poor ostrich and the sheep keep running here and there while Marie is guarded by George. While trying to save her, George even gets hit by an arrow. It passes right through his chest, but luckily it's just a ghost arrow that can't hurt humans. Once all the ghosts gather, they ask George if he's actually the prince or someone else. Just to make sure, the ghost of George's grandfather asks his nickname. After the correct answers, all the ghosts get really happy to meet George. He tells them about the rats and asks for their help. The ghosts believe that the magic flute can help George, but only the king knows where it is kept hidden. Saying this, all the ghosts disappear while George moves forward with his friends to find the magic flute. The tunnel takes them to the castle, and they all hide inside the barrels. The guards mistake them as food supplies and carry the barrels to the kitchen. The chef is ordered to cook a turkey for dinner, but he accidentally grabs the ostrich. The poor ostrich fights for his life and even takes help from the sheep, but the chubby chef is determined to kill the ostrich at any cost. Luckily, George rolls with the barrel and knocks down the chef. The guard hears the noise and arrives to check, but Marie and George explain that they are just new staff members. The guard doesn't seem to agree, but before he can investigate any further, someone hits him with a frying pan. It's Margaret, a royal servant who is also George's childhood friend. She and a few other servants are the only humans left in the castle. They are forced by Charlotte to obey her and work day and night. George introduces Margaret to his new friends, but she seems a little jealous of Marie. She even starts recalling how close she was with George and their parents even considered their marriage. Hearing this, Marie gets a little uncomfortable because she has developed some feelings for the prince. Meanwhile, George doesn't say much about his relationship with Margaret and focuses on his mission. He needs to find his father as soon as possible. Luckily, Margaret knows where he is. Charlotte has locked the king in the study room. To reach there, they must pass the ballroom, but today is a masquerade party so the ballroom will be full of guests. Margaret gives everyone some costumes so they can blend in with the guests and complete their mission. Beside George and Marie, all the other guests are rats being served by human servants. Before Charlotte took over, Margaret was a princess, but the rats forced her to become a servant. The party is held to celebrate the birthday of Charlotte's only son, Prince Philip. After getting the magic flute, Charlotte plans to kill George's father and declare Philip as the new king. Hearing this, George gets really worried and starts looking for a chance to head towards the study room. Suddenly, the royal dance starts, and Marie bumps into Prince Philip. George reaches there too, and introduces Marie as his fiancée. Philip starts suspecting them, so Marie distracts him by asking for another dance. Luckily, the jester is also a human, and he chooses the perfect music to distract everyone. George uses this chance to escape the ballroom and reach the study where the poor king is sitting lifelessly. When George tries to wake him up, the king only sings a few verses of a lullaby and pulls out his star brooch. George notices that the star is similar to the pattern on the mirror. 
As soon as he puts the star in its place, the mirror rolls up and opens a secret storage. Instead of the magic flute, there's a talking scroll that gets really angry at the disturbance. George begs the ancient scroll for help, but it only answers in riddles. The magic flute is hidden in a room with no doors or windows. Marie gets really confused, but George immediately understands that the riddle is pointing towards the old tower. As they can't walk down through the garden, George and Marie must use a rope to reach the tower. Luckily, Marie's ballet skills help her balance on the rope, and she easily reaches the other side. Margaret is witnessing everything from the window, and wishes best of luck to George. Unfortunately, Charlotte has figured out the plan, and she captures Margaret. Meanwhile, George and Marie enter the old tower but don't find any flute there. George asks the talking scroll for more help, but all it tells is another riddle. This time, Marie figures out that the answer is rug. As George pulls away the rug, it reveals a hidden tunnel. They both start walking down the tunnel and take the lamps along with them. When the sheep and the ostrich notice that the lights have disappeared from the tower, they start getting worried. The ostrich is afraid of heights, but the sheep forces him to step on the rope. Unfortunately, they both lose balance and fall down in the garden. On the other hand, George and Marie notice that the staircase has ended, but they haven't reached the end of the tunnel. If they take another step, they will fall down from several kilometers. Marie wants to turn back, but George can't give up so easily. If he doesn't find the flute, he will lose his father. George gathers up courage and takes a step forward. Miraculously, he doesn't fall down, and a magical staircase appears under his feet. It takes them to the basement where hundreds of flutes are hanging in the air. George and Marie start checking each of the flutes one by one, but this is going to take several hours. George gives up and decides to go back to break the spell. But Marie doesn't agree because even if she turns normal, she has to marry Mr. Ratter while George is going to be a nutcracker forever. Hearing this, George gets really upset because he wants to spend the rest of his life with Marie. She is the girl of his dreams and the perfect partner he could ever find. He still wants to save her and rushes to the staircase but it has disappeared again. Now they are stuck here forever. Before dying, George wants to convince his love for Marie, and she does the same too. To celebrate their bond, they start singing and dancing. The power of their true love causes all the flutes to combine and form the magic flute. Moreover, a secret gate opens up by itself and leads George and Marie towards the castle. Charlotte catches them in the corridor and threatens George to give away the magic flute. If he doesn't, Philip is going to kill Margaret. Poor Margaret is ready to be sacrificed, but George can't be this selfish, so he gives away the magic flute. Little did he know, Margaret was also a traitor. She did everything to earn Charlotte's favor. Now Margaret will marry Prince Philip and become the next queen. She orders the guards to capture George and Marie so they can be humiliated in front of the whole rat kingdom. Later that night, Charlotte gathers all of her guests and introduces the king as their sworn enemy. She also brought George and Marie, but they can't stop her because their hands and feet are tied up. Suddenly, the king wakes up, so Charlotte orders the servant to bring the magic potion. Little does she know, the ostrich has accidentally drunk all of the magic potion. The king finally gathers his senses, so Charlotte uses the magic flute to control him. If a human plays the flute, it turns the rats into their real form, but if a rat plays it, the humans become his puppets. Everyone starts cheering for the new King Philip, and enjoys the humans dancing like idiots. Thankfully, the ostrich wakes up and runs towards the ballroom. Charlotte gets distracted and drops the flute, but Marie catches it in time. Charlotte offers to solve all of Marie's problems if she gives away the flute, but Marie knows that the king is the rightful owner of the magic flute. As soon as the king plays the flute, all the rats including Margaret turn into their original form. Everyone starts celebrating and forgets that Marie needs to return home before sunrise. Before she realizes, the morning arrives and Marie disappears from the castle. After a while, she wakes up on her bed and assumes that it was just a dream. She must face reality and save her mother from the prison. Marie gathers courage and tells Mr. Ratter that she is ready to be his wife. Suddenly, the door opens and Prince George walks in. It wasn't a dream at all. George has paid all of the debts and now he wants Marie to be his wife. Marie's mother can't believe his son-in-law can be a prince so she immediately agrees to the proposal. After a few days, Marie and George get married and live happily ever after. Don't be afraid of hardships. They make you stronger and prepared for what you actually deserve.